What's up everybody, Matt Mona is here and I'm back again with another review and it happens to be another mid-range smartphone. Now mid-range devices this year in 2015 have been pretty good and the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3 falls in that category. This is definitely in the top five best mid-range smartphones you can buy this year and retails for 250 US or $300 here in Canada. So without wasting any further time, let's hop into my review of the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3. Let's start off with the design. The Idol 3 has a really nice design for a mid-range phone. It's flat, thin, and the back has this scratchy, rough feel to it. The sides are lined with a chrome accent, giving the phone an elegant look and feel. For a 5.5 inch phone, it doesn't feel big, and it fits nicely in my hands. I never once felt like I was going to drop it, and that's the way it should feel. To give you an idea how big this phone is, I've paired it up with the LG G3 and the Asus Zenfone 2. It's slightly smaller and shorter than the Zenfone 2, but a little bigger than the LG G3. On the bottom of the phone you have a micro USB port, and on the top lies an audio jack and another microphone. Flipping it over onto its left side is a combo micro SIM, SD card slot, and a power button which is a terrible place to get to. Thankfully though, like most smartphones with poorly placed power buttons, you can easily double tap the screen to turn it on and off. On the other side is your volume rocker, and the buttons are placed a little too close to the body of the phone, making it a little hard to differentiate between volume up and volume down. Again, these are not a big deal, but little things that manufacturers should consider when making a phone. On the back is a 13 megapixel camera, dual LED flash, and Alcatel One Touch typography. And finally on the front is an 8 megapixel shooter, notification light, sensors, and dual stereo speakers. Overall this phone is one good looking mid-range phone with good size bezels. Which brings me to my next topic, and that's the display. The display is 5.5 inches and has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 it pumps out 401 pixels per inch, which is more than enough pixels for you not to be able to see them. The display is absolutely amazing. Text looks sharp, and the screen is really bright. In fact, you can lower the brightness to 25% and still be happy with how bright it is. The IPS panel is using Technicolor technology, which enhances the colors and images while offering great viewing angles. Overall, for a mid-range phone, the display is really good, if not better than some higher-end devices out there. And to make matters more enticing, the display is paired with two dual stereo speakers that sound really good even when the volume is at full blast. In fact, they're so good they trump the majority of speakers on higher-end smartphones except for maybe HTC's Boom Sound technology. So far, you have a pretty well-designed phone that doesn't slip from your hands a great display that offers superior viewing angles, and dual stereo speakers that produce crisp sound. But how does the phone actually perform on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, inside is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 quad-core 64-bit chip with an Adreno 405 GPU. The specs are sound, and for the most part, the phone felt fluid. However, I did come across the odd stutter or lag. The processor should be powerful enough to prevent this from happening, and I feel it's more of a software issue, perhaps due to Android 5.0.2, or maybe poor coding with the minimal interface that Alcatel slapped on. Either way, it's not a terrible experience, just something worth mentioning. When it came to playing games, the more intensive ones felt slower to load, but once it was loaded up, they ran fast and fluid. The phone never got too hot to be of concern, even when under full load. Geekbench scored for a single core use is 638, and for multi-core is 2480. Like I mentioned before, it is running Android 5.0.2 right out of the box, and hopefully it'll get Android 5.1.1 in the near future. Alcatel has kept their theming to a minimum, so if you like stock Android, that's pretty much what you're going to get. They did add their own button graphics, which I think look great, and included a few nice touches such as tap to wake up and the ability to turn the phone over to mute. But the coolest feature of this device is being able to use this phone in reverse. That's right, if you receive a phone call, it doesn't matter how you pick up the phone, because both ends of the phone have a microphone. If you're multitasking, you don't need to look over to see which way is the top, because it will just work. It's not groundbreaking technology, but it's something unique that no other smartphone manufacturers are doing. So we now know the software and performance is pretty good, but how's that battery doing? Inside the phone is a 2910 milliamp battery that's non-removable, but offers some really good battery life. I turn the phone on at 9.30am and end up with 45% battery left at 10.30pm. This phone can easily make it a day and a half without having to charge up. 
Just to let you know, there is no wireless or quick charging, but that's okay. I think I'd rather have the longer battery life. I find it strange that all these mid-range phones offer better battery life than the most of the expensive flagship devices currently on the market. The Idol 3 comes with 16GB of internal storage and a micro SD card slot allowing you to insert up to 128GB of extra storage space. And I also just want to mention call quality was great with no drop calls. Finally, let's talk about the camera. The rear facing camera is 13 megapixels with an f2.0 aperture and has the same Sony IMX214 sensor as the Nexus 6. The camera on the Idol 3 tended to favor underexposing photos and sometimes you'd notice too much noise in the picture even in bright lit conditions. Under low light the sensor didn't perform as well and you can really see the additional noise present in each photo. The front facing camera is 8 megapixels and does a fine job for taking the odd selfie. Most front facing cameras are not meant to be superb and you'll find this one to be just as good as the majority out there. As for video though, both the front and rear facing cameras support up to 1080p and it does a really good job at it. Overall this is a decent camera and for social media lovers you'll be happy with the results. So what's the bottom line then? Should you go out there and buy this phone? I definitely think it's worth considering. You're getting a beautiful package, a phone that doesn't slip from the hand, a really bright display that has awesome viewing angles, and dual stereo speakers that sound really good. For 250 US or 300 Canadian, you really can't beat that price. And like I mentioned before, this is definitely in the top five best mid-range smartphones of 2015. So let me guys know what you think of the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3 in the comments below. If you have one, let me know what you like and dislike about this smartphone. I'm also going to be doing a versus video between this phone and the Asus Zenfone 2, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button, and I'll see everybody in the next video.